Hi, I'm Jack and welcome to my booktube channel, Jack and the Bookstack. Today is Friday. I just logged off from work for the weekend and I'm going to celebrate the weekend and kind of the wind down to summer by taking myself book shopping. But first things first, I'm going to get my nails done. I'm in the mood to switch from this pretty summery pink to like a deep fall red. So I'm gonna do that. And what's great about this nail salon, it is right next to a Goodwill. So I can go stop in there and check for some thrifted books when I'm done. But while I'm getting my nails done, it takes a little while. So I'm going to listen to the audiobook for this bad boy. And this is one of my tips and tricks for reading a lot of books. This is a long book. This is The Hero of Ages, which is book three in the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. Really excited to finish it, but long books can take a while, right? So I'm kind of mixing it up by also listening to the audiobook. It'll be perfect. I'll say hello to all the ladies at the nail salon and then just zone out with Mr. Brandon Sanderson. So I'm excited to see what Vin and everybody is up to in this book while I get my nails done and then go shopping. Let's get to it. Nails are done and I also got about 17% into my audiobook. So now time to go thrifting. I am seeing this author on so many bookshelves, and yet I don't hear about Cassandra Clare in too many book reviews. I'm kind of curious. Have you read her books? I read Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. I'm wondering if this one's any good. I am such a contradiction because I don't subscribe to Book of the Month because I hate their logo on books, and yet I get really excited when I see it at Goodwill and thrifting because they normally pick very good, well-known books. I get super excited when I see some of my favorites at Goodwill. The Nightingale made me sob. It was so sad. And I bought this exact edition because I loved the cover so much. And of course, we all know Alice in Wonderland, although I haven't read it yet. It's on my TBR. The Alice Network is such an awesome book about girl power. I love it. And this just reminds me, I need to start my Outlander reading. I'm collecting these. I know I'll give it a try at some point. Ooh, I've been wanting to read this. Something tells me this read-along was not successful. That's a lot of additions. Any other fans out there of Vanderpump Rules? I haven't heard anything about Stassi's book. I don't think I'm going to be reading it either. Laura Hildebrand looks really interesting. I haven't read her yet. It's been nearly two hours, no joke. It took like an hour and a half to get my nails done and then went to Goodwill. Couldn't film too much because apparently Friday night Goodwill book department is like the spot to be. It was super crowded. But I showed you some of the things that I saw. It was a pretty decent selection. I think there's always the Goodwill standards of like 50 shades and all that. But uh, I picked this one up. This has been on my TBR for the longest time, but it's just never a top priority to like pick up from the library or anything. The Heretic Queen, Heiress of Misfortune, Pharaoh's Beloved. So I'm super excited to read this one. In ancient Egypt, a forgotten princess must overcome her family's past and remake history. Ooh, sounds fun. Excited for that one. I've read Michelle Moran before and I really liked her. So excited to check that one out whenever I get to it. Next, I picked up The Sound of Gravel, which has been on my TBR for a very long time as well. So I'm excited I stumbled across this one. This is a riveting, deeply affecting true story of one girl's coming of age in a polygamous family. I've heard great things about this, so excited to check this one out as well. One that I did not show you while I was walking around because it was too awkward to film it. I found this one, a collection of the New Yorker cartoons, and I thought this would be super fun to have like maybe on a coffee table or something. It's just exactly as it sounds. It's a collection of cartoons. So it seemed kind of fun and I'm excited to go through it. It was $3.29, so it didn't break the bank. Time to head to the second bookstore in tonight's excursion. Let's go see what they have. Okay, I've never been here before, but let's see what they've got. 
My first impression walking into the store is just how huge it is, how many books there are, how many bookshelves, it's enormous. I went to the thriller section first. That's normally my go-to when I first enter a bookstore. I was happy to see a lot of options that I am familiar with and that I have seen before. Of course, with used books, you're not going to see a lot of very recent releases, but there were a lot of book of the month selections, like this one, that seemed very familiar. At a cost of $12 to $15 for a used book though, I'm not jumping for joy at the value. This mystery series I have never heard of before, but it is so cute and charming, and something about these titles make me think it's a very cozy mystery series. I feel like if I were to get involved in reading these, I would definitely need a sweet snack handy because I'm getting cravings just looking at these books. I'm a sucker for a good theme. Can we please talk about what in a book classifies it as a men's adventure? There are so many books in this genre section and try as I might, I couldn't find women's adventure. I wandered over to their new selection of books and unfortunately, they put these fat, ugly stickers on the cover of each of them. I have no idea if it would leave any residue on the cover, but something is for sure. I will never buy a used book from here because of these stickers. Even though I'm dying to read Babel, I won't be picking it up today from Half Price Books. Oh, it's bright. That was not a good time. I do not think I'll be going back there. It's like super chaotic organization. Like, thrillers were in like three different rows, fantasy was all over the place. I have no idea how it was organized. And then for their new books, everything had stickers on them. Like, even the paperbacks? I think that's horrible. I don't know what kind of residue that would leave. So, um, I don't know if Half Price Books is going to be a bookstore that I frequent. It was a miss. Well, let's go to trusty old Barnes & Noble and see what they have in store for me. Sometimes you just have to go with what you know. I love this particular Barnes & Noble because I think it is in such a beautiful shopping center. I love visiting here and checking out some of the restaurants nearby as well. I can officially say I am a fantasy reader. This was the first section I wanted to check out because there wasn't good options at the other stores. These are a couple series I'm interested in checking out. This particular book I read many years ago, but for some reason it is living in my head rent-free and I think I need a reread. For some reason, this particular book has been calling to me and it is the reason I am here at Barnes & Noble today. Death Note seems really fascinating and I love this black edition. Another reason why I wanted to come in here was to see this Death Note edition that is the all-in-one so I wouldn't need as many books. I worry about the spine though because it's bigger than my hand so I worry it would get damaged. Manga is new for me but Junju Itu is the reason I find it fascinating. I want to check out Frankenstein from him. I'm kind of bummed that my library doesn't have it so I'm definitely going to be buying this one at some point. Can we please start a bookworm drinking game where we take a shot whenever a book is compared to Game of Thrones? This is getting ridiculous. I'm still intrigued though. I'm not sure when my Barnes & Noble started this spicy romance section. Maybe because it's in the very back corner of the store, a hidden dirty little secret. But I'm pretty impressed by the selections that they have. There we have the off-campus series, which I remember coming to a store trying to buy and they didn't have it. So I'm happy it's here now and can reach more readers. And there's some other series in here that I want to try as well. So I'm glad to know where to find them. I am all ready for spooky season, so this table caught my attention. The Only Good Indians is at the very top of my TBR. House at the Bottom of the Lake is also one I want to check out. I hear it's kind of weird. The Southern Book Club Guide to Slaying Vampires is also one I'm dying to read. I feel so much better going to Barnes & Noble where the classification of the books actually makes sense. Where when it says it's fantasy, it's fantasy. And thrillers are thrillers. It's not like one genre on one side, one on the other, and then clear diagonal across the store are more of that genre. Half price books, I'm, I'm still rattled from my experience. 
but mission accomplished. I got what I came to get, which was volume one of Death Note. I'm really excited about this. And it's so funny because I was in the store and I picked up all the volumes and I was like carrying them around. I was like, no, I should put them back and just try one and see if I like it. And then I just stood there for a while, really thinking about it. I really wanted to buy them all, but you know, progress, right? Start with one, see if I like it. And I had to go to Barnes and Noble because Amazon did not have volume one. So that's why I really had to come out and what brought me book shopping on this Friday evening. I'm really excited for this. This is the Death Note Black Edition. It has volumes one and two. It is a manga. So it's like, if you're not familiar, it's like comic book style. But it sounds like it'll be great for spooky season because it's about a boy. I think it's a boy. And he is a, a student with a great prospects, but he's bored out of his mind. And he finds the Death Note, which is essentially a notebook from the Death God. And whosoever name is in it is going to die. So our main character vows to use the Death Note as a way to rid the world of evil. But I don't think it's going to be that easy because there's something like eight volumes or something. So I don't know. It seems creative and fun and it's good for spooky season, like I said. So that's what brought me here. But now that mission is accomplished, I think it's time to go home. The sun is setting. The footage is getting super grainy. Not good in low light on this iPhone. I need a new one. But I don't feel like cooking. So I think I'm going to go pick up dinner. There's this restaurant nearby called Sauce. And they have a salad I really like pick the the boyfriend up some pasta and just go enjoy my new books. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next video.